Greetings, unsettled souls. Yes. Welcome to the correct views. Sam I began she doing political commentary for the media speaks. And uh, Christelle wanted me to do calves, but she ran away. So yes, the Cleveland curse has been broken, which is good. I, I how many of you don't follow sports? So I'm not gonna spend any time. Don't tune out, it's gonna get like 30 seconds. But the Cleveland curse. I know we're not a sports show, but it has been broken. And as a lifelong Indians fan, and as somebody uh, who isn't likely to ever see the Indians get it, they blew that in the 90s, as uh, somebody who hates the Browns, and it's good to see. Do I like basketball? I, I barely even know the Cavs are a team. But way to go, Cleveland, you broke your curse. That's not what you tuned in for, however. What you tuned in for was to hear about the insanity that is going on in the political world, which is fine. Uh, because, you know, that, that's what we do here. But, I, again, we all need an escape. And even though basketball isn't mine, it is for many people. The sun.co.uk, it's the play clock, by the way. The, the, not the play clock, the shot clock. It, it makes the game drag forever. Get rid of the shot clock. I'd probably like it. Spy Nation, U.S. Navy discuss plans to fit humans with microchips and track their every move. When you hear news that bad, you almost wish I would simply stick to basketball, don't you? I'm going to go to the screen share because this is dreadful. Um, I, I see why people talk about basketball and nothing else. Who wants to talk about this? The U.S. Navy has held meetings to discuss highly controversial technology, which could one day allow the government to track the movements of every single citizen in the country. And the sun has learned, of course, the number of naval officers visited the home of an American presidential candidate and transhumanist called Zoltan Istvan, who believes human beings could be fitted with technology to boost their brain power and to enhance their physical attributes. Istvan, who I would like to publicly call a nutcase, said that they discussed the possibility of implanting humans with chips fitted with global positioning GPS technology. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? The Navy wants to chip people. Now, a lot of you are immediately going to say Mark of the Beast. Okay, maybe. But the Mark of the Beast, you have to have it to buy and to sell. They, while I'm not calling them saints, I'm not calling them good people. If you get a mark and it's not to buy and sell, then it's not the mark of the beast. Right, here's the residue. Well, I've, I've, had a, I've had a shower, by the way, and I've washed my hands repeatedly. And what do they use? At Cedar Point, they stamp your, your right hand so that when you leave the park, you can get back into the park. Okay, it's a stamp. It's technically a mark on the right hand. I don't need it to buy and sell. Okay, <laughs> I already bought to get in. It just proves that I already bought so that they knew I bought once. It's, I don't need it to buy and sell. It's not the mark of the beast. However, it doesn't have to be the mark of the beast to be a terrible idea. Do you want the government following your every move? I don't think that you do. The other thing here is... Um, this whole transhuman, this virtual reality, you can uh, live in a computer. Yeah, you change a couple computer codes and you turn it into hell. It doesn't sound, I mean, literally like the fire. It doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Will humans soon be plugged into a real life matrix, it asks. We have this, well, I'm going to go back to screen share. Um, oh, yeah, no, you're going to miss my pretty face for just a moment. I'll be back. Get your eggs ready. We have seen correspondence between Istvan and Vice Admiral James Weisskopf, who was retired from full-time service to work in the Navy Department called the Chief of Naval Operations for Strategic Group Studies. And it is dedicated to devising revolutionary warfare concepts. It says that in his letter, Vice Admiral Weisskopf said that the meeting broadened our understanding of the merger of humans and machines, your personal perspectives were interesting and timely, and we begin our research as we begin our research process, he wrote. And you have had a direct impact on our viewpoints and future concepts. And Istvan believes that human life can be enhanced if we agree to have computers or chips fitted into our brains and bodies. 
Sure, just trust the government to do that. That's a great idea. Um, don't it, you know? We can't even keep our computers from being hacked. Let's open up our very beings to the option. Um, he's a believer in merging humans which te with technology. He's even suggested that technology could one day allow people to live forever and travel around America in an immortality bus, locked up like a coffin to promote his ideas. And a bunch of Navy officers, he said, came to my house, and one of the main topics was this chip implant, implant strategy. The Navy's worried that soldiers could enter service and the chips would already be implanted in them, so they'd have to find a way around it. Do you understand that? You might already have a way around it. So we, you have to have the government chip. Like, let's say you want to chip yourself. And the only people that have access to this chip is your wife or your daughter or your son or a very small number of people, maybe your best friend. Other people have, including law enforcement, may not get this chip. That might not be such a bad idea. I might actually be willing to do that. I could see me trusting like my brother that much. Um, not Christelle. She she would lose the tracking information. I don't like that guy was cleaning the floor. Sorry, you God. I I would she she would mean to keep it, but it would be gone. Um, I wouldn't trust me with one either. So I'm not talking crap about her. I love you, God. But I would like trust my brother with it. That's not what they're talking about. Did you hear what I said? They want to override that. The Navy wants you to have their. Is it the mark of the beast, friends? I don't know. But that last bit of information that I gave you was one reason that I do not trust it at all. And friends, it's listener supported. I've got a bunch of stories to get to. Don't zone out. But if you can, tune in to this. Patriot, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. I am trying to make this what I do on a full-time basis. And you'll get uh, rewards and promotions uh, for helping me. And so please look into it. ISIS threat to U.S. air bases, South Korea intelligence agency warns. Now, my immediate response to uh, Paula Hancock's article here was, after dealing with the insanity that is Kim Jong-un and, uh, his, of course, his predecessor, uh, the other Tin Horn dictator, uh, they've had three generations of lunatics leading the country. Um, the first lunatic, the grandfather, the uh, the eternal leader, and they do still refer to him as their leader, um, even though he's dead. He is still an active leader, um, and that's the least of the crazy things that go on in North Korea. Um, what I mean, ISIS says how long you have to grow your beard. Kim Jong Un in North Korea says what kind of haircut you have to have. If you don't believe me, look it up. There's mandate. You're only going to have so many haircuts if you're a man. There's only, and they're a woman for that matter. The government decides how you have to cut your hair. ISIS decides how you have to cut your beard. Um, Al-Baghdadi leads ISIS, and he is an utter madman. Kim Jong-un is called sane by who? You see, I don't think this is going to be as frightening for South Korea as it is for some other. The only difference is the North Koreans, for the most part, and not to praise Kim Jong-un, but he doesn't routinely carry out terrorism in South Korea. And for that reason, this makes it a lot worse. And it's why we're, uh, we're going to go into it. Uh, all jokes aside here. ISIS has collected information on 77 U.S. and NATO Air Force facilities around the world and is calling on supporters to attack them, according to South Korea's intelligence agency. Thank you, Daesh. The terror group has also released information on individuals in 21 countries, including the personal details of one employee of a South Korean welfare organization the National Intelligence Service said. So basically, they're going after the very best of people. Isn't it great that the, the religion of peace, and again, even if you go all the way to the radical side, I mean the worst of the worst, the ISIS people that are cutting off heads or what have you, they are claiming that ultimately it is for to bring a goodness, the goodness of Allah, 
So they target welfare workers who, I mean, I'm not saying I, we, we need to have a welfare state, but my point is these are people who are genuinely good people. And they impugn them or they put their information out or endanger them or threaten them. It's all the proof you need right there. It said the agency is now under protection, or the person, excuse me, is now under protection, the agency said. The NIS says uh, ISIS, we call them Daesh, hacking organization, they're called the United Cyber Caliphate, collected details of U.S. Air Force units in South Korea, including Osan Air Base, the addresses and Google satellite maps. Well, that's not very hard, considering that all they had to do was look up public information there. That's, that's not all that scary. I mean, really, they know how to use a computer. Ooh. In a statement Monday, U.S. Forces Korea said it took the safety and security of its installations very seriously. And again, there are spies from North Korea that are quite dangerous. So, so they're, they're, they're used to fighting off infiltrations from crazy people. I think they're going to be able to handle it. Um, fortunately, South Korea doesn't see a lot of terrorism, so this could be a problem. Again, the North... The only thing you can say about the North is they're not they're not evil in that regard. Usually you don't hear about North Korean suicide bombers. Um, throughout constant vigilance and regular exercises, our South Korean counterparts, we remain prepared to respond, which is good. Because the CIA, of course, warns of the ISIS threat. They said Sunday that the terror against South Korean citizens and foreigners in this country is becoming a reality. So, I mean... They're diligent people, which is good, because it looks as though they're going to definitely need to be. Uh, moving on, Turkish police use rubber bullets and tear gas to dispense, pro, to disperse protest against attack on Radiohead fans for listening to music during Ramadan. Now, I don't know about you, but as far as rock and roll, Radiohead has to be one of the most overrated bands in all of music history. Ditto on Oasis. This love for these bands that write mediocre music at best amazes me. Now again, if you're comparing it to something truly dreadful like Beyonce or Nickelback, then oh my god, of course Radiohead is Mozart. But by and large, they are the single most overrated band ever, ever, ever. However, isn't it great to live in a place where you can listen to that, what I just said, laugh, flip me off, whatever. We go about our day, and we both have a beer. Well, you see, ISIS decides, no, you must, you must, whether you want to or not. I mean, I have friends that are, that, that are I'm honoring Ramadan. I have nothing against it. It's what they choose to do. They don't bother me for not honoring Ramadan. We have thugs in Turkey, some of them may have been tied to the government, were beating radio ahead fans with pipes for drinking and listening to music during Ramadan. And then right here from the Independent, we have Turkish police have fired tear gas, of course, and rubber bullets at a crowd for protesting an attack. The attackers, who have not been identified. So in other words, these people came out to protest in favor of the people who got beaten for no reason with a pipe. The attackers, who have not been identified and are said to have totaled several hundreds, were reportedly angry that people were consuming alcohol and listening to music during the holy month. The... They reportedly forcibly entered the Velvet Indie Ground, nice name, music shop in Istanbul, Istanbul, in Constant. Why did they all get the business with the Turks? Okay, I had to. Where a Radiohead listening party was being held before beating people with pipes, Al Jazeera reports. Is it any wonder that nations do not, I've covered this on the show before, nations do not choose to be Islamic. And now, hear me out. How many of you know what the pyramids are? Ever see the Great Pyramid? Ever hear of the Sphinx? Ever hear of Ra? And you know, the whole uh, uh, dancing like an Egyptian thing. 
Where do you think that came from? Guess what? That's not Islamic. No crap, right? Okay. How did they go from worshiping Ra and the sun god and dancing like an Egyptian to becoming Islamic? They did so by the sword. That's how they were slaughtered into it. You either became Muslim or you died. How do you think that is spread everywhere? That's how. <laughs> that right there is how, friends. The protest was organized in response to the attacks. Those taking part shouted shoulder to shoulder against fascism while marching. Skirmishes broke out by, from police and protesters, after which multiple arrests were uh, reportedly made. And I'm sure life is wonderful in the Turkish prisons for uh, those poor protesters. I'm sure their life is just golden when the uh, other uh, people that are in there are probably much more strict and will be horrible towards them. In the statement, Radiohead condemned the attack and said their hearts go out to those attacked. It said, we hope that someday we will be able to look back on such acts of violent intolerance as things of the ancient past. For now, we can only offer fans in Inst Istanbul our love and support. So I mean, th th this is what this is what you get when you when you allow. Um, this is why you don't want a lot of Islamists unvetted into the EU, into um, parts of Europe, because they're not compatible with the West. They can't even understand a listening party. And again, I'm not that big of a Radiohead fan, but I support how long they've been around and I have mad respect for what they've accomplished in a music industry that's really hard to make it in. And we're letting people into the country over there who don't even, can't even process something as simple as that. They're not going to make it in that culture. Local Mayor Ahmet Misbah de America also condemned the attack, thankfully, saying in a statement, the fact that this incident was associated with fasting and that lifestyle, the way this instant incident was serviced, it is a planned assassination on social peace. So it said people who are trying to dynamite the contribution of Ramadan to special solidarity are going to fail and they will lose. Look, this is a repeated problem within the religion and they need to get this under control because they're leading to a rise of really dangerous fascism in places uh elsewhere and they're feeding into things like the right sector as is uh nato in the ukraine while the right sector is going to spread even faster once this kind of thing happens and then you're going to have your own nightmare there that's just one instance out of many friends why you shouldn't do it all of this is brought to you by the Seacrest Motel. You might be asking yourself, say, oh my God, you haven't talked about the Seacrest Motel in forever. That is because they are only open when Cedar Point is open. You see that? Those rides? That's Cedar Point. And you're going to get a discount by staying at this motel because you're going to say, hey, I'm going to Cedar Point. I'm having a blast. I heard about your hotel from the correct views. Sam's show, the guy with the tattoos. We stay there all the time. Have I ever stayed at the Breakers? I'm not going to lie. Yeah, about once a year. If you like to get ripped off, go to the Breakers. Because at Seacrest, the beds are just as cozy, the rooms are just as nice, and the prices are half. Okay, I'm dead. No matter what time of year you go, it's going to blow the doors off of every other price up there. And you're going to save more because you're going to say, hey, I heard about this from the correct views. Sam show. Saying, hey, I said I was, they said I'd get a discount. You will. It's the Seacrest Motel. Hope they have a great season. I'm glad to see them going at it again. They just remodeled the rooms and everything. Guys, moving on, KLBJ Newsroom. And this, of course, is brought to you by Sticker Junkie right there. Another place, by the way, when you say, when you get your stickers made, make sure on checkout you type in correct views or the correct views. You're going to get a discount as well from them. Man poses as cop for food discounts. Now, this almost made the dumdy of the day, but my dumdies are really rich this month. I don't have as many, thankfully, as I've had in the past, but they're really dumb. They're even dumber than this guy. However, this guy was dumb enough to get mentioned in the show. 
Authorities have accused a central Texas idiot of, I might have added that word, of pretending to be a police officer in order to get a meal of discount. So I stand corrected. It wasn't even free food. It was just a discount. College Station Police say 29-year-old Falasheo Michael Galis Bayoti, and don't ask me to say that again, on multiple, I don't even think I said it that time, on multiple occasions this month, went to a local restaurant and presented police identification and a badge and demanded a law enforcement discount for his food. It goes on, the police say the restaurant manager believed uh, that he was a police instructor because he had indicated that he was now in training, but used to work for the Freeport PD. Police say he is not a police officer. He was arrested Tuesday and charged with two counts of falsely and unlawfully presenting himself as a commissioned peace officer, which is a misdemeanor. So absolute genius there. It looks like his first offense, too. I mean, so luckily, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it is his first offense because if he was that dumb, he would have been caught by now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, moving on to just two more stories. This is from Snopes.com. Twin Falls Refugee Assault. Now, this is bothersome because this shows that the problem that is that we were talking about, uh, the kind of people that would beat you with a pipe for listening to radio ahead on Ramadan, these kinds of people do what all kinds of people do. They have children. And in this story, very young people have done very disturbing things, X-rated, nasty, not cool things. And we're going to cover it here because we have to, but I want to give a shout out that uh, this is not a pleasant story. We'll go, we'll, we'll, we'll put it that way. It's not a uh, great story over the dinner table. All right, here's what we know is true. Police are investigating a June 2nd, 2016 incident in Twin Falls, Idaho, involving a five-year-old girl and three boys aged 7, 10, and 14. That's going to be important in a moment, particularly the 7 and 10-year-old. What's false? The incident was not a rape. The girl was not murdered. The boys involved were not Syrian, and a knife was not used. No language barrier prevented police from instigating or detaining the boys involved. Well, you know what? That's not true. And Snopes has completely given the... This was the original story that was given out, okay, at first. But that's not true. What has happened here, and Snopes is doing a dreadful job with it, is that the 14-year-old boy, we, we don't get their names because they're under the age, the 14-year-old boy took the girl at knife point and sexually assaulted her and then instructed the two younger boys who weren't able to yet get an erection to urinate on the girl. And this is what is being brought into the country. Now, you could argue that the children didn't know any better. That's what vetting is. You can't have people coming into the country with a mindset that they can do to non-Islamists what they do to non-Islamists in other countries. I'm sorry. That would be like me going to... Afghanistan, a largely Islamic country, and saying, I'm going to play death metal in the car parking lot at full volume because I feel like it. It's, it's my right to listen to whatever I want. That's not going to fly there. Likewise, their beliefs, friends, are not compatible with civilization here in the West in many instances. And friends, that brings us to what? The, what it brings us to the dumb of the day. <laughs> Oh, yes, the You Are an Idiot music. Let's let it play for a second. Come the other day, Yale students tell English professors to stop teaching English because there are too many white poets. Now, 
there's so many reasons. This is so dumb. This is so dumb on so many levels that I don't even know where to begin. But I'll give you the obvious one. Since English is a language of the white man, it would make sense that most English authors and poets or what have you were white. Just like most poetry written by African poets on the continent of Africa tends to be black. Because you know what? The African languages, let me shut this off. I hate this damn autoplay. The African languages are black languages. And there aren't a lot of African white poets. So let's quit teaching any African languages, right? Um, in the South. Not in South America, I mean, not like Texas. In South America. There's a lot of Spanish. In Mexico, for instance. Do you know that most Mexican poetry is written by people with brown skin? Isn't that freaking amazing? And they tend to they tend to speak Spanish. And guess what? They're, they're, they're not white, they're, they're not black. Let's quit teaching Spanish. <laughs> oh my god! Some Yale University students are demanding changes to the English department curriculum. Specifically, they don't think it should feature so many English poets who are straight, white, wealthy, and male. It is your responsibility as educators to listen to student voices. Go to hell. Um, we have spoken. We are speaking. Pay attention. The major English poet sequence was a mandatory two-course commitment for English majors. Imagine that. You're majoring in English. Is particularly problematic. They don't want to have to cover Jeffrey Chaucer, Edmund Spencer, William Shakespeare. Where? Why would you need to know who William Shakespeare is? John Donne, John Milton, Alexander Pope, on and on and on. T. S. Eliot, for crying out loud. They think it creates a culture that is hostile to students of color. Well, then don't become an English major, or Learn the difference between facts and hostility. It is not hostile to teach the culture of any color or race. The facts are the facts. You teach the facts. John Don wrote a poem. The poem went like this. We're going to teach you the poem if you want to be an English major. If you don't like it, don't be an English major. There's nothing wrong with providing a greater variety of courses to students, but if students want to read more female and minority authors, the English department is welcome to oblige. But there's only so much that can be done. There just aren't that many modern writers who were gay or transgender. In other words, the people that they want to read never wrote. They never existed. They were fake. Okay. How many of you watch my, uh, my Halloween shows? Guess what? Buddy Puff is fake. He didn't write any books. The, there aren't that many gay or transgender writers in the modern era. Students should feel comfortable challenging the notion that Shakespeare or Merton does, Milton deserves a place in canon. In fact, that sounds like an excellent subject for a classroom discussion. The other thing is a lot of people think that uh, William Shakespeare may have been gay. Uh, he allegedly said that he was leaving his, uh, leaving, the only thing he was leaving to his wife was their bed because it was the only thing that was truly hers. Um, did he really say it? I don't know. I don't know that much about Shakespeare, but I've heard the story from a couple people. So he might have been gay if that makes you happy. But in any event, maybe his wife was just frigid. I don't know. But in any event, that's the dumb of the day, and you've listened to The Correct Views. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, you can donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. You can go to the description below, Patreon. Donate monthly. It's a huge help. And uh, friends, make sure you don't call Uber. Why would you want to call Uber? Call Change Transportation. You're going to get a better price. And come on, say it with me. You heard about it on the correct views, and you got an amazing deal there as well. Change Transportation. You can find them on Facebook. Good night, friends. God bless.